Ocala. Five minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Monday morning. I don't know if I ever shared this with you, Robin. When I was a young guy, I loved the movie 2001 A Space Odyssey. I mean, I just loved this movie. Now, probably not for the reasons most people think. Most people would think, oh, because it's this great science fiction film, right? Mm -hmm. So I went to see the movie, and I was with two friends. And uh, after we saw the movie, I, I was just mesmerized by the movie. And we went to Burger King, and uh, and I said, God, I love that movie. I love that movie. So the other guy, I hated it. Why did you like the movie? <laughs> Why did you like that movie? I said, because the guy gets in a rocket ship, mm-hmm. and he just flies until he becomes an old man. He's just, he, he, what? That's what you want? You want to be alone, like, for the rest of your life, flying through space? And I said, no, nah, it's just not that. It's just, it just look, it's a good thing to get away. Don't, don't you just sometimes want to get away? And they said, so why don't you just go to Europe? <laughs> why do you want to go to outer space? And then the other guy said, why don't you just get a girlfriend? You know, <laughs> uh, anyway, sometimes, you know, we do go out on treks and uh, as a way to clear our brain or to put things into perspective. And uh, our next guest, my goodness, she went on a trek of her own. And, and uh, I can't wait for her to share it with you. The book that Linda Kane Hubbard has written is called Loving Dangerously, Journey to Nepal. It's a true story of adventure and risk. It is her memoir. Linda is a journalist. She's the founder of the Hubley Foundation for Children, which encourages educational programs for chil- children. And she's the founder of something called Trendsetters, which is a marketing company. And um, we could probably learn from her about marketing. Loving Dangerously, wow. Good, good morning, Linda Kane Hubbard. Good morning, Linda. Good morning, Larry. Thank you. Mm. I'm excited to be on. Where are you right now? I'm all the way in California, where it's very hot right now. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how long ago did you go to Nepal? I went there in the late 70s. I was 20 years old, and it was the uh, trip of my life. Did you go there because wow. same reason I wanted to go into outer space and just disappear for a while? Did you just try to get away? Is that what happened? Um, You know, actually, I went through a very heartbreaking situation, and I thought, okay, change of location. I've got to to also seek out what really I need to do in life. And after this very heartbreaking situation at home, I went, um, I actually got a, a scholarship as an artist. I was a young artist, and I got a scholarship to England. And from England, I traveled all the way around the world. So that's started me on the journey. And see, and see, on the surface, that sounds like, oh, gosh, wouldn't that be a, a fantastic thing? But but you, you, in order for us to understand this, you have to share with us the heartbreaking part. Oh, yes. Well, I, I was a very young girl, and I had um, my first boyfriend, my first love of my life. Um, I had uh, a baby, and my parents kind of turned me out and uh, kind of wouldn't acknowledge it, and I had to handle it all myself. And so I did get myself into art college, and from then I actually did um, go go um, searching, like what is this whole thing about, and you know what is it about regarding um, guys and romance, and the whole um, the whole journey of my life was was kind of. It hit me. I need to do something different. I need to do, find out what it is I'm going to do in life rather than, you know, be the effect of everything. Yeah, and, and, the, and the baby was given up for adoption, but you kept in touch with her, right? Yeah. So basically what I did is then go, I, I really was very young, so um, my parents just didn't understand, and, but they did support me in the art college, and when I took off, I thought, okay, I'm going to find out my answers here, and I'm going to travel and, and um, study every place that I go to. So I, that was my beginning of my journey. And then uh, to write it down, I actually had um, a girlfriend did a writing seminar. She was um, the leader of the seminar, and she said, Linda, you have to write this down. You did a journal. You wrote a journal all during your travels. You painted all, all during your travels. You had photographs all during your travels, so put it in a book. And I said, okay, why not? 
so that's a couple years ago I decided to write the book wow. and I dedicated it to, yeah and, and, and so as we read the book um, it's hard to well, and that's not hard it's actually easy it's easy to try to see that as you wrote this book you were reliving what you're what you're kind of revealing to us for the first time but in your world you were back in you were back in the 70s again Yes, it was a turbulent time too. If, if you remember, after the Vietnam War, it was the late seventies, and and uh, but Americans were um, well welcomed in, as far as travel goes. It was um, you know kind of a, a free love, you know. But there was a lot of rock and roll, and you know the, uh, the drugs, etc. But in any case, I decided I'm going to just take off and see the world. Were you alone? Yes, I was. I was by myself. I had my sketch pad and my <laughs> paint and, so, that and me, uh, my, my earth shoes and a, a, a skirt, and that's about it. Oh, that's <laughs> wonderful. So as, a, as an adult male, <laughs> I'm 60 years old. I, I, I can look back at, at those years, and as a younger male, seeing a, a younger female, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing that your experiences traveling the world alone would have been different than a male counterpart doing the same thing. Yes, it was. Uh, well, I met a lot of people along the way because there was a lot of students that were traveling at the in those days too. More, and it was safer. And basically, um, I met up with students along the way and friends along the way because when I lived in Toronto and went to art school there, I basically met a lot of people from around the world. And they said, whenever you're in Italy, go see my friend Mario. Whenever you're in England, go go here. And I w actually um, met when I was in England at art college. I had a boyfriend there, Simon, um, and we were really close. But he, we kind of split up, and then I took off for Europe. And along the way, I had friends that actually put me up in their place, including, you know, looking out over the uh, Florence, Italy, from the rooftops because they had a, a rooftop apartment. It was just just wonderful. And then finally, I decided I've got to join Simon. Who, when I got to to um, Greece, I found out that he was in Nepal, and his friends were um, doctor and nurse interns in Nepal, up in the hills, with the British Nepal Medical Trust. So I said, okay, why not? I'm this far. I'm going to go join him. <laughs> oh, so wow. I caught a plane. <laughs> I know it was like you're invincible when you're 20. Well, did, you don't even think. Where, where did all the money come from? Uh, how did you pay for all of this? Yeah. Oh, I had worked um, when I was in college. I worked. I'm um, doing architectural drawings for a big firm in in Toronto. Oh, okay. I made so much money I didn't even know what to do with it. So I saved it up. And I use that to go. But you know, when you're in Nepal, it's like I think I spent twenty five dollars a month. Oh wow! Oh my so, gosh! How? How did you? <laughs> I know. How? Explain that. How did that happen? Because you know the the money is um, their standard of living is so different, and you just pay for food, and the youth hostels are very inexpensive. So, oh, okay. and then when you're trekking, <clears throat> I actually stayed at the. Um, health posts in each of the villages we trekked about eight or ten hours to get to the next village and then went way up in the Himalayas all the way t near the Everett um, Mount Everest base camp and uh, it was such a delight to go on uh, trekking and I, I was in great shape at the time and and basically um, so met all the people and that was the key thing about traveling meeting the different people and the so so many different cultures that you learn about. Uh, we were told that you met the head llama. Uh, some people think of going off to other countries and then you'll be sucked into a cult and you'll lose your identity and you won't be able to leave. Did that ever occur to you? Oh, no, not at all. The head llama was Buddhist um, uh, of Nepal and he was one of the teachers of the Dalai Lama. So there was like two or three teachers of the day. So he was revered, and when he um, called me to I, headquarters, <laughs> and basically I did a painting of him, and that was my entree into a lot of things. I could you know, whip up an, um, uh, a painting, um, a sketch, a portrait at any time. And so I did, I did a portrait of the llama, 
and in exchange, he chanted for me and put me in one of the guest rooms overnight, and all I heard was chanting all night long. Really wow. interesting. And then, <laughs> <laughs> then he gave me a prediction in the morning. <laughs> Did it come true? So I should, you know, I actually should not share that right now. You have to read the book to find oh, out. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> all right. Oh, my goodness. All right. I, 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 I'm going to be honest with you. I wasn't even sure where Nepal was, so I just went to Google Earth. I'm looking at Nepal, and... Uh, I don't see any cities in this map. <laughs> oh, oh, you know, at, well, they just had a big earthquake uh, a few months ago, mm-hmm. and so it was in the news. But it's right between India and um, China, and it's run um, by a king, at, uh, king of Nepal. And um, it's very, uh, Kathmandu was the main city I went into, right on the top of the bus, on top of backpack. Oh, my goodness. So I could goodness. see everything. Oh, my so goodness. <laughs> Yeah, because it, the bus was so crowded, and so I talked the, I talked the uh, bus driver into it, gave him a few rupees, and I sat on the top and went into Kathmandu Valley, which is stunning. All Himalaya mountains surrounding it, and rice paddies terraced up to the foothills. Really stunning. So I had the best view in the house. <laughs> and when I, came, when I got there, of course, there's a um, youth hostel that I was able to to uh, stay at, and then I met one of the uh, one of the guys, the, one of the the uh, students there. A lot of students were traveling, and he was from Switzerland. And he said, "Come on over. I have a friend that's a he's a patron of the arts, and he loves artists. And I know you're an artist. You got to show him your sketchbook." which I did, and he said, okay, I want you to do some of the illustrations and paintings for my book on Nepal. So he, he had a big three-story house, and he used to put people up. Like, he'd ha- he had other artists there, so I had a room in, in his house overlooking the rice paddies. Mm-hmm. So it was... <laughs> and oh, wow. Mo- he had a, and, yeah, I know, so I, <laughs> it was so wild. I just fell into so many great people and situations. So, and, um, so did he did did he pay you or did he promise you uh, residuals when the book sold? Because hmm. that's that that's <laughs> an issue these days. In those days, he just paid me for the paintings and then he put me up for the months that I was in Nepal. Wow! And then I traveled up in the foothills from his place because mm-hmm. I had an actual base at that time because of his place and he was wow. very interesting fascinating well I, I, it still sounds like something I, I mean it, it, wouldn't you like to do this again it sounds like something that was fun for you it was very fun but you know there were some rough times and I had a lot of realizations about you know basically that you know, any the drugs were not the answer and some very scary times with some um, one time hitchhiking across France and, and in Naples and it very, very, um, you know, it was oh, rough risky. times too, yeah. But I got out of it and I realized that I could take care of myself. And then at the end, when uh, after the Lama's prediction and, and all this traveling, I realized what was what was the, the you know what was most important and then after that I went home uh, with all of that knowledge it was so so wonderful but you know I decided to dedicate it to my my first granddaughter who just who was born a couple years ago she's now two but I thought okay when she gets older she's going to read about her grandmama and it and I haven't pulled any punches here it tells the truth and wow. it has pictures in it and it has the paintings mm-hmm. and she could see the live things and see what her grandmama did so she has problem with men that, problem with you know drugs whatever it is she can kind of look and see that what is I cool did. wow yeah. that is very cool um, I, I dedicate it to women I mean from 17 to 70 the ones that have read it love it mm-hmm. yeah it well, is well done I, I love it well too done. I'm not a woman I <laughs> know no. uh, <laughs> yeah, true yeah, yeah that's true <laughs> even said don't leave the guys out. Yeah, yeah, don't leave us out. <laughs> Linda, yeah, can, I, adventurer. can I ask you to hold on? Because I want to hear more, but we have to take a commercial break, okay? So, Very good. We'll, and I want to hear about the funeral pyre, because I can't imagine that. I, I can't imagine oh, seeing somebody yeah. die and, you know, being burned up. Mm-hmm. So we'll find out about that when we come back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. A flood watch is in effect through 8 p.m. this evening. Mostly cloudy today and tonight with some showers and thunderstorms around. 
There could be some flooding downpours. The high today, 85 to 89. Tonight's low, 72 to 76. Clouds and some intervals of sun tomorrow with a couple of showers and thunderstorms, especially in the afternoon, the high 88 to 92. The Wednesday variable cloudiness with a couple of showers and thunderstorms, high 88 to 92. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm Joe Lundberg. Whether you're building it up or knocking it down, get it done, rent it now. Sunbelt Rentals is here to make your job a little easier. Our knowledgeable staff will help you find the right equipment for any job, big or small. Did you know that Sunbelt Rentals carries heaters, air conditioners, generators, lighting, traffic control, and so much more? So whether you're building it up or knocking it down, we've got the equipment you need. Get it done, rent it now. And right now, for a limited time, you can have it for less. Just by mentioning this ad, if you rent it Friday afternoon, you can keep it the whole weekend and only pay for one day. But this is a limited time offer, so stop into Sunbelt Rentals today, Northwest 27th, just a quarter mile east of I-75. For more information, just give us a call, 352-369-9101. 352-369-9101. Sunbelt Rentals. Get it done, rent it now. 352-369-9101. Are you in need of custom screen printing, embroidery, or promotional items? Then look no further and come visit the brand new Legacy Team Sales. LTS is conveniently located off 17th Street next to Armstrong Homes in beautiful Ocala. We offer the best prices and highest quality products for your company, team, school, or nonprofit. Whether looking for screen printed shirts, embroidered polos, or travel team uniforms, you'll be sure to find it at Legacy Team Sales. Come visit our new 27,000 square foot facility. Our friendly and knowledgeable sales staff will assist you in every part of your custom purchase. LTS carries the hottest brands in the industry like Under Armour, Russell, Mizuno, Asics, Badger Sports, Gildan, Pacific, OGO, and many more. At LTS, screen printing embroidery is done in-house and we guarantee customer satisfaction. Stop by, give us a call, or check us out on the web at shoplts.com. Remember the name, LTS. John Nottingham of the Miami Dolphins here, proud to be this year's chairman of the Special Olympics Champions for Champions event. Come join players from the world of professional sports, sharing their stories with a great dinner on Friday, September 18th, and or play at Candler Hills Golf Club on Saturday, September 19th. Either way, you'll be helping the Special Olympics of Marion County Champions for Champions. Call 988-7998 for details. That's 988-7998. Please help our Special Olympians. All right, 1122. Thank you for tuning in this Monday morning. It's, uh, I guess the clouds are starting to move in, so uh, just be yeah. aware that the, the rain we're having today is actually what we thought was going to be really bad weather, and it turned out to be not so bad. That storm called Erica was a tropical storm, was a hurricane, and then it dissipated. But the uh, the weather itself, the, the remnants of the weather are what we're having today. It didn't quite get here yet. It looks like it's the beginnings of it, but uh, the big thing is it's just going to be rain. It's probably going to put a couple of inches of rain on the ground and stay out. Of the, don't go in the boat today. You know, Stay away from the... the uh, oh, gee, that would be the Atlantic, right? No, the Gulf. Stay away from the Gulf. Yeah. I guess that's yes. when, where the waves are. Uh, all right, on the phone is Linda Kane Hubbard. Boy, we're having a great interview with her. Her book is called Loving Dangerously, Journey to Nepal, uh, A True Story of Adventure and Risk. Um... There's a song by Leon Russell. I don't know how many of you even remember Leon Russell, but he had a song called mm-hmm. Tightrope. And one of the lines mm-hmm. in the song was, I'm up on the tightrope, flanked by life and the funeral pyre, putting yeah. on a show oh, for you yeah. to see. Do you remember that? It was the first time, oh, I ever yeah, heard the, I first time I ever heard the expression funeral pyre. And I didn't know what it was. Mm-hmm. And, and to be honest with you, I still don't really know what it is. But you experienced this, right? Yes, I did. In Nepal, I landed in New Delhi, and I had to go past the, um, to get to Nepal Nepal from India, I had to see the, uh, go through the Ganges Ganges River. And the Ganges is where they take bodies, and they put it in the river to bless it, and they take the body out, kind of wrapped in uh, some kind of linen, and put it on um, all these um, pieces of wood, and then light it up. Um, real, real near the bank of the river, and basically all the family pretty much prays over the body, and it's lit up just like it w- would be in a you know a Viking funeral, hmm. only it's on land, and it was just stunning. So, um, although I didn't really want to go swimming in the Ganges <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> after that, <laughs> wow. but you know it. 
when when you think of uh, cremation, we don't ever see it. They just do it and then they bring you something, you know. Well, this is the real thing. The bodies are there wrapped in a very light linen. You can tell that it's a body, and they put it on top of a bunch of um, wood, and then they have someone there ready with water to to put the fire out at the end, and they all, that's normal there. So, oh, so do they push it into the water or something? No, they don't push it into the water. They have water, a pail of water, to put the fire out after it's uh, burned enough. Okay, and then there's what, bones left? Yes. <laughs> well, there's whatever is left. It, a lot of it is um, is basically the same thing, uh, very uh, powdery stuff. But basically, that's what they do, and then they... Um, dispose of that. I know, I didn't see where they put everything afterwards, but I saw the fires, and I saw the bodies floating. They float it out, kind of, they take it out, someone takes it out just into, like, waist-high water right. and floats the body there, and it's um, kind of blessing in, the, in their religion, and then they bring it back and put it on the pyre and, and light it up. Oh, my gosh. So it was, yeah, it's, it was actually... Um, the way they feel about it is, um, you know, the spirit goes on, and they believe in, you know, there's a next life, and it you're not just your physical body, but you're actually a spiritual person. So did and any so of this... That was interesting. Did that, whatever religious or, or spiritual things you believed at that point in your life, did any of this influence it, change it? Oh, yeah, because there's, you know, half the people on the planet... Are, are you know Buddhist and Hindu and Shinto and they believe in um, another life you're going on and you know they still believe there's a higher power most of the religions are have a very similar thing where they believe on a, in a higher power and something's going to go on whether it's your spirit or whatever it is and I thought that was really interesting because I had been examining that too in my own life and I felt really close to the people in Nepal. When you go there, you can feel it. It's, they're very kind people. And um, I, I would love to have, you know, basically the book is on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble and at Hugo House Publishing, but I have a special gift for anyone that um, ca- calls from the show, and lovingdangerouslythebook.com is that website I, I was going to tell you about. Okay. And yeah, and there's also a video, a short video. Oh, that really? We're on. Yeah. Uh, did, and uh, that gives you some idea. Did you have a better relationship when your folks, with your folks, when you came home? I did. My mother was so excited. She had me give a slideshow and a presentation because I brought back the you know silversmith earrings, the Gurkha warrior, you know, in a scabbard. They're ni- their their big swords that they have. I had one and I gave it to my parents, and the, and my dad put it on the wall and and I you know they had me give presentations to all their friends. They, <laughs> it was it was kind of a cathartic. You know? Wow! Wow! Oh I just I, so I went to the website uh, oh, lovingdangerouslythebook.com dot com uh, for the for the listeners. That that's where you would go. Is that where we buy the book? You can buy it there, and um, also get a special gift. So uh, free gift, and basically uh, the video will be hooked up shortly there too. Is so when is so that's the place to go? Yeah. When is the last time you were in Nepal? That was in the late seventies, and I am going to go back because I want to do a book on the Gurkha warriors. Mm-hmm. They're really interesting. You know that they're the the ones that protected the Winter Olympics in uh, the uh, sorry the London Olympics a oh couple of years ago. I Those were the Gurkha warriors. I wonder oh how I wonder how different it'll be for you. I wonder how I wonder if technology oh, yeah. has changed anything or uh, I, I, back then you couldn't communicate instantly like you can today. Well, you could with the phone, I guess, but. Yeah, you ha- you know had landlines. You didn't have a lot of cell phones, and they have no. I mean, you have to trek with a backpack to bring things up in the villages, and they they you know present their wares in the uh, you know, outdoors on a blanket. And so basically, I think up in the hills, it hasn't changed much. Down in the city, I'm sure they've grown because I've seen pictures of how big it is now. So you know they have modern conveniences. Even at the the patron of the arts that mm-hmm. I that I stayed with, he had, you know, he had a record collection on a whole wall and books and the whole thing. And wow. he had yeah. So basically, I think that 
in the hills, it hasn't changed much. Linda, thank you for being with us. We, we've we been spellbound the whole time. Thank you for talking to us. Uh, we lived vicariously through you for 25 minutes. <laughs> Loving Dangerously. Go to the website, lovingdangouslythebook.com. Linda Kane Hubbard, what a great interview. Thank you so much. Thank you, Larry and Robin. That was great. We'll be right back. Fox News Radio, I'm Pat O'Neill. Shannon Miles accused of killing Harris County, Texas Sheriff Deputy Darren Goford at a gas station Friday arraigned on murder charges today. The incident outraged enough people in the Houston suburb to start marching. It means that people do respect the police. They need the police to protect them, their property, their children. Goforth was a 10-year veteran. The chief prosecutor is personally taking the case. Fox Radio's Evan Brown. Thousands gathered at a Sunday service to honor three firefighters who died fighting a wildfire in Washington State August 19th. Mary Sajak lost her son. Every moment of Andrew's life is precious to me. To tell you anything would require me to tell it all. And that would take almost 27 years. Tom Bachevsky and Richard Wheeler were also killed. Police in Spain say four people are hurt, four others missing after an explosion at a fireworks factory in the northeastern part of the country. Fox News, we report, you decide. Last Friday, Allison Cohn made her status FBF to a pic of me as a pipsqueak. Awkward. It got 59 likes and 12 comments. Impressive, Allie. Geico also has a comment on your Flashback Friday. Did you know Geico has been saving people money on car insurance for over 75 years? Bet you didn't even know they made cars back then. And if you think your flashback is awkward, you should see our pic. Hashtag blurry. Hashtag over 75 years of savings. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Sweet memories fill this place. 